The Appalachian Development Highway System, or ADHS for short, is a network of highways currently planned or under construction that are intended to boost the economic conditions of communities in the Appalachian Mountain Range. Now, the ADHS has had so much history behind it that I'll likely have to make a dedicated video on it at some point in the future, but it's relevant today for one of its corridors, Corridor X. Now isn't that a cool name? Corridor X is a 202 mile long route that stretches from Interstate 69 in Bihalia, Mississippi to Interstate 65 in Birmingham, Alabama. If you haven't figured it out yet, Corridor X is known today as Interstate 22, though I'm willing to bet you knew that since you were the one that clicked on this video. Interstate 22 begins its journey at a cloverleaf interchange with I-269 in Bihalia, which is a suburb on the outskirts of Memphis. From the start, I-22 is concurrent with US Route 78, and it will continue to be until nearly the ending of I-22 in Birmingham. The first few exits on I-22 aren't anything special, they're just regular old diamonds with some smaller state routes. These exits include the towns of Bihalia, Victoria, and Red Banks. Next, we snake our way around Holly Springs, where we meet an exit with combined state routes 4 and 7. Down the road is an exit that connects us back to Mississippi 178 and Lake Center. As you can probably imagine, US 78 wasn't always built to interstate standards, so Mississippi 178 does the job of following old US 78's alignment. As a result, we parallel it and moreover have several exits that lead back to it. This is shown perfectly in our next two exits, the first of which is for the small settlement of Potts Camp, and the second being an exit for 178 itself in Hickory Flat. Subsequently, we meet an exit in the small town of Myrtle, which is followed by three exits in the city of New Albany, which contains State Routes 30 and 15. Our next exit is interesting because although it's technically for State Route 9, with the way the exit is set up, it's very clearly intended to direct traffic to the absolutely massive nearby Toyota manufacturing plant. In the nearby town of Sherman, we also meet a second exit for SR9, which this time heads southwest for Pontotoc. As we continue eastwards, we meet exits with State Route 178, the Natchez Trace Parkway, and most importantly, a cloverleaf interchange with US Route 45 in as close to Tupelo as we get. As we head out of town, we also meet exits with Veterans Memorial Boulevard and Auburn Road. Next up are exits with State Route 371, Fawn Grove Road, and, you guessed it, State Route 178, before crossing Marine Highway M65 into Fulton. Despite Fulton being of reasonable size, it only has two exits, one of which isn't even in city limits. Finally, we reach an exit with State Route 23 before crossing into our second, and final state, Alabama. Props to you, Alabama, for having the most out there state welcome sign. You guys don't even try to skirt around it, you just have the phrase there front and center. Our first two exits in Alabama are just small county roads that don't really lead to anywhere in particular, but the second exit gets close to State Route 19, which will go under I-22 here in a bit. Our next exit, State Route 17, connects us back to the nearby town of Hamilton, which is also brought to us by exits with County Road 35 and US Route 278. Down the road, we meet an exit with State Route 129, which is the fastest way to get to the nearby city of Winfield. Next on the chopping block is State Route 13 and State Route 118 outside the town of Carbon Hill. As we bypass the city of Jasper, we meet four exits in total. The first is for State Route 118, which connects us back to State Route 69 and 5 down the road. Speaking of Route 69, it's our next exit, which is succeeded a mile later by State Route 269 with Industrial Parkway pulling up the rear. I've noticed that I-22 seems to have a bit of a habit of bypassing every city it's supposed to serve, as I've not once seen an example of 22 going through a city instead of around it. Maybe you can make an argument for Tupelo, but even still, that's just one example out of a 200 mile long route. This point is shown well in our next two exits, which serve the small town of Cordova. The current setup works, I guess, but it seems to me that it would have been easier to make the route look something like this instead, which could have saved them an entire interchange. Following this are two exits in the small villages of Wyatt and Quinton. Furthermore, we arrive at an exit with State Route 5 and US Route 78. That's right, US 78, the route that's been with I-22 through thick and thin, is finally leaving after all this time, opting to head south into downtown Birmingham instead. Wrapping up Corridor X, we meet four exits with some smaller surface roads before ending our 200 mile journey at Interstate 65 in Birmingham. Interestingly, it seems I-22 may have been planned to go further at one point, as the roadway continues for roughly half a mile after the exit with Interstate 65. Remember the side comment I made earlier about I-22 bypassing most of the towns it's intended to serve? It seems I'm not the only one who's noticed this. Although mainline I-22 is finished, there are four planned child routes for I-22 between Mississippi, which will have one, and Alabama, which will have three. The first and biggest planned route is Interstate 422, which will encircle the northern half of Birmingham, going from I-59 in Bessemer on the south side to I-59 again in Argo on the north side. Now due to quote-unquote environmental reasons, I-422 and Base 22 can't connect directly, so ALDOT's solution is, you guessed it, another spur route. Interstate 222 will spur off from I-22 in Graysville and head north to connect with I-422 in the nearby community of Brookside. Interestingly, this spur will serve purely as a connector and won't have any other exits besides the two interstates it intersects. 
Thirdly, we have a currently unnumbered spur route that would spur off from I-22 near Eldridge and continue northwest, loosely following State Route 13 up to Spruce Pine, where it promptly ends. This route is special specifically because it's the only 22 spur that's actually received construction so far. The 7 mile segment was constructed years ago between Spruce Pine and Country Road 79. Unfortunately, construction has been halted indefinitely since funds ran out. Finally, the last spur, and the only one in Mississippi, is another unnumbered route, this time going from US-45 in Shannon to I-22 in Tupelo. To quote Wikipedia, US-45 is currently a freeway along this entire corridor, but is not up to interstate standards. Additionally, congestion and safety issues along 45 in this area need to be improved. Interesting. That's all I've got for I-22, and I'll see you all in episode 15, where we talk about Interstate 93.